and you'll sit there and break down. And your body's breaking down as a feedback to let you know you're not being authentic because your highest value is your identity. This is something that I've been uh, speaking about for many decades now. And so I have been fascinated by this. When I was 17, 18 years old and I met a teacher named Paul Bragg, he was a longevitist. He was an individual that was dedicated to living a longer life. And so I was, I was inspired by that topic even then. So it's been with me a long years, almost 50 years. You have at the cellular level, a source of energy in a little organelle, which is a little organ inside a cell, which is a symbiotic cell organelle, which means that a bacteria millions of years ago was incorporated into another cell and they live symbiotically and it was called an endosymbiote. And this cell organelle was called the mitochondria. The mitochondria has little cristae and little shells and internal cell walls and um, that have enzymes on it that actually are involved in what they call oxidative phosphorylation and is the very keys to our energy in fact, the heart muscle has a lot of mitochondria because it requires a lot of energy to keep eating all the time. Our regular muscle has also high numbers of mitochondria because we use our muscles quite often. But based on the cellular needs, we have mitochondria that allow us to generate ATP, adenosine triphosphate, which is the source of our energy at our biochemical level. So our vitality, our energy levels, if you will, uh, have a lot to do with it. Vitality comes from the term vital force, which was believed by the ancients to be the source of life. You know, when you inspired at the first breath and expired at the last breath, your whole life was about respiration. And cellular respiration is what the mitochondria were involved in. And so the number of mitochondria um, are constantly, some are dying and some are replenishing. They're dividing and multiplying, and they're also being recycled. My, microphagia, the mitophagia, they call it. And so the number of mitochondria have a lot to do with our energy levels. Now, the mitochondria are also attempting to respond to the exact energy needs based on what we're intending. So our intentions in life, if we're living in alignment and congruent with what we value most, our highest value, the mitochondria are not produced too much or too little to meet the needs, and we maximize our energy potential. That's why I've said in previous presentations that everybody has a set of priorities, a set of values, and when they live by their highest value, their energy goes up, their self-worth goes up. And when they live by their lower values, their energy goes down because the mitochondria are multiplied or less multiplied according to the intention. And when you're living in your highest value, your intention is most clear, you're most objective, and you're less subjectively biased in your interpretation of the world. And therefore you have the least amount of disturbance or disorientation or dis, dis, you might say a disperception about the environment meeting needs. So when you're living by your highest priorities, the mitochondria are maximizing their numbers to be able to maximize the ATP, which is maximizing energy. But when you're living in lower values and you're trying to do something that's not as important to you, basically by, by injecting values of others and trying to please other people and trying to satisfy it and multitask and distract yourself. Whenever you're living in your amygdala and you have subjective bias and you misinterpret your reality, you distort your reality, in other words, you distort the need of the mitochondria versus the actual needs of the body. And so your energy goes down. Anytime you're not living by your highest priority, your highest value, and living congruently and delegating lower priority things, your energy is going to go down as a feedback to let you know that you're not being authentic, you're not being efficient. 
the body is trying it's trying at all times to create symptoms to try to get you to actually live and act authentically and efficiently. See, whenever you are in a, your amygdala, you tend to want to avoid predator and seek prey. It's a survival center, the desire center, the desire to avoid that which is unavoidable and the, to, a desire to achieve or seek that which is unattainable. And so what we do is we tend to have a subjective biased interpretation of our reality, which distorts with false positives, false negatives, confirmation biases, disconfirmation biases, distorts our reality. And so the, the brain and the cells start to think, oh, I need more or I need less than actual use. And so what happens is we get an accentuation or a diminishing of the mitochondria and our energy levels are going into a manic stage or a depressed stage a low, high energy state and get almost nervous or a low energy state and get kind of subdued instead of actually the exact needs, um, the energy for the needs. So when we're living congruently, according to our own highest values, our maximizing our, we maximize our energy and we literally allow our cells to have maximum efficiency with respiration to be able to create the most ATP to create the most energy. So our mitochondria are responding to autonomic uh, perspectives so if we're perceiving a threat and we're in a fight or flight response, um, it's going to kick it into gear to a higher degree. And if we go on the other side, we it's going to go in the other direction. It's going to subdue it. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go over or under in our production, which is inefficient. And we end up going with a kind of a hyper or hypo state of energy expression. And we get too much or too little. And then the glucose and oxygen inside the cell requires um, these these to be regulated and we're not in a regulated state. So the second we are living in alignment with what we value most, we maximize our energy and we actually have exactly the right energy for what our actual intentions are. If we're distorting our reality, we're distorting our energy levels. And I try to help people to prioritize their life because if they live by priority, their energy levels go up. Anybody who knows it when they feel like they're on top of the world, when they're doing the highest priority things, and they feel like they're, they're, you know, there's, they have more energy at the end of the day when they're doing something that's really important to them. They have more energy at the end of the day than when they started. Think of a day where you were really, really doing something that was really, really important to you that you really were engaged in. It could be reading a book or doing some sort of work that was really inspiring to you. And at the end of the day, you weren't drained. You were actually building energy. Now, what's interesting is there's a thing called neg entropy, which is life physics and entropy, which is death physics. When we go from disorder to order, it's negentropic. When we go to order to disorder, it's entropic. And entropy is also called missing information. And it's also the draining of energy. So let me give an example. Whenever you are infatuated with somebody because you're living in your amygdala response and you're seeking a prey, you're seeking something you're infatuated with, you're conscious of the upsides and unconscious of the downsides. The unconscious part is the information that's missing that you're ignoring. That missing information is entropy, and entropy is loss of energy, dissipation of energy. When you resent something and you're conscious of the downside and you're unconscious of the upside, you're ignoring the upside. Again, missing information, and missing information is also the source of loss of energy. So what happens is you're, you're skewing your reality by being infatuated. When you meet somebody, if you're infatuated and you're blind to the downside, when you're resentful to them, you're blind to the upside. And anything in your life that you're infatuated with or resentful to, you're not seeing the whole. But when you're mindful and you're seeing both sides, which your intuition is constantly trying to get you to do, your energy level production matches now a poised, efficient response. And you have neg entropy. Every time you're mindful, every time you're living by your highest value, and every time you're objective and you're reasoned and you're basically sitting, seeing, seeing things as they are, instead of seeing things as you are skewed in your perceptions, when you're biased in your perceptions, infatuated means you're blind to half of it and resentful you're blind to half of it. So anytime you judge, you're going to lower your energy levels. Your vitality is going to, and you're going to dissipate energy. And when you're under distress that way, which is called distress, your telomeres actually shorten, telomerase goes down, and you actually shorten your lifespan. And the reproduction and the, the uh, duplication of cells is, is uh, skewed. 
But if you go through and live by your highest priority and see things objectively and are more mindful and more objective and see things where you're seeing both sides and not just one side, you're not missing information. You're not missing uh, energy. You're not losing energy and dissipating it. You have negentropy. And negentropy is life physics. That's why if you live by your highest values, your energy levels go up. That's why your self-worth goes up. That's why you're authentic there. Your life, your identity revolves around what you value most. So anytime you're doing high priority things, delegating low priority things, your energy level is going to go up. And when you ever you live by your highest values, you tend to walk your talk. You tend to do you because you spontaneously are inspired to act on what's really important to you. When you do, you tend to achieve. And when you achieve, you tend to want to achieve something greater. And so you keep expanding your space and time horizons to do greater accomplishments. And when you do, your telomerase adds telomeres to help you live longer, to be able to be able to fulfill those longer visions. And the mag magnitude of the space and time in your mind determines the conscious evolution you've obtained, determines your legacy in the world. And when you have goals that go beyond your physical mortal life, you give rise to the immortal legacy that you dream about leaving on the planet, the difference you want to make. So if you live by highest priorities, you automatically increase your longevity. And what's interesting is when you do, you don't live to eat. See, when you're living by lower values and you're unfulfilled, you want to fill yourself full with consumption. So consumerism and purchasing overpriced brands to uh, compensate for your feeling low, the desire to eat sweets, the desire to go and consume and shop, Anything that's basically overspending and causing a depreciation economically in your life or overeating and causing, um, you know, gluttony, if you will, all of those are going to be because you're living to eat instead of eating to live. It's going to increase the probability of entropy and shorten your lifespan. The people who live longer are the people that have built wealth and have money working for them. In fact, the word wealth comes from wheel, which means health and well-being. Health and wealth actually have the same root, wheel. They means well-being. And that's why people with higher socioeconomics tend to live longer. Lower socioeconomics tend to live shorter. There's an R reproduction and a K reproduction in ecology. And the people that are basically lower socioeconomic, they usually have a higher fertility and mortality rate and shorter lifespan for the children and life. And people that have a higher socioeconomics have fewer children and they live longer. and They take longer to develop. So we actually see a longevity factor to the degree that we're living by our highest priorities and increasing our self-worth and doing what we're inspired to do, delegating the lower things and not living to eat, but eating to live. And therefore you don't have volatilities in your food. Your ghrelin and leptin, which are hormones that are out of the gut going into the hypothalamus that are regulating your eating patterns have a lot to do with whether or not you're infatuated or resentful to things. When you're infatuated, you want to consume it eat. When you resent something, you don't want to eat. And so those hormones are responding to those perceptions that are in the amygdala when you're living by lower values. So you're, you're throwing those things off. And the greater the volatility there, the greater the volatility, the shorter the lifespan. And the more steady you are when you're objective and it's more neutral, the more steady you are, the less volatility, the less fluctuation you have in your dietary patterns. And the more you don't live to eat, but eat to live, you eat just enough to make sure you're most efficient to perform. If you have a very, very meaningful, very inspiring, very highly uh, empowering activity coming up in the next days or two, you will be very disciplined, self-governed, and be able to eat just enough to maximize your performance. When you do, you have the most telomeres, the most um, <clears throat> telomerase enzyme, the most energy levels, the most mitochondrial matching of the needs, your intention uh, provides exactly the right energy, you're most efficient, you actually have most efficiency and longevity and vitality. So if you want the keys to vitality and longevity, it really boils down to <clears throat> living by priority. And what's interesting is that we found out that when a person's infatuated with something or resentful to something, anything that they resent, they're assuming there was more drawbacks and benefits to it. Anything that they're infatuated, they assume there's more draw benefits and drawbacks. All of that is stored in the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind has a memory of all those imbalances. And what it happens, if it sees a pleasure without a pain or a pain without a pleasure, it stores that in a memory and it creates an imagination to avoid the pain in the future and to seek the pleasure in the future if you live in the amygdala. 
So what it does is it's separating the present into the past and future. And anytime you separate the present, uh, the, the, the present into the past and future, you get what is called the arrow of time, which is the source of entropy, which is the thing that breaks you down and dissipates you. So it's so important to live by priority and to fill your day with the highest priority actions that help you fulfill what you believe is your mission in life. You do, you'll end up eating wisely. You'll live not to eat, but you'll eat to live. And your vitality and your energy levels are going to go up. That's why I tell people when you're doing what's highest on your priority, you won't even notice your, your health. Paul Bragg taught me that when I was 17 years old. When you're conscious of your health, that's because you've lost it. When or you're, you're, not, you're not present. But when you're actually really present, you're not even noticing your physiology. It's almost like a timeless mind, ageless body state. It's almost like you've transcended your physiology. Your physiology is so efficient, you're not even aware of it. There's no symptoms giving you feedback to let you know you're not being authentic because you're living authentically. So I can't emphasize how important it is to prioritize your life, to ask yourself, what is the highest priority action I can be doing right now that can help me fulfill what I feel is most deeply meaningful to me? The thing that actually will serve the greatest number of people, but it will actually be the most meaningful thing to me. When you're doing something that's inspiring to you that you can't wait to get up in the morning and do, that also makes a difference in other people's lives, and you go after and pursue challenges that inspire you, you maximize your energy, you have the most fulfillment, you're not having to go and eat to live, you're living to eat, you're actually having the most uh, telomerase and telomeres, you're actually having a bigger space and time horizons, you're a visionary, you end up having the most efficient actions, the day zips by and you feel like you're just present and you're grateful, you see things on the way, not in the way, and you end up feeling like you're on top of the world instead of the world's on top of you. But the second you try to subordinate to everybody else, inject all the other people's values in your life, try to do something that's not really priority, try to multitask and scatter yourself, feel like you're putting out fires during the day, not feel like you're on top of the planet, you feel you're underneath and you feel overwhelmed and you feel like, God, you didn't get anything done. You're an emotional bear when you come home. You're irritable, you'll project your stuff onto your family, you won't have resilience or adaptability. You'll have distress instead of use stress, and you'll have entropy instead of neg entropy, and you'll sit there and break down. And your body's breaking down as a feedback to let you know you're not being authentic because your highest value is your identity. Tell me what your highest value is, and I'll tell you what your life revolves around. My highest value is teaching. My life revolves around teaching. I do it pretty well every seven days a week, every day. And that's because I do what I love every day. And that's the key. If you're doing that, you don't age as much. I'm going on 67 and I got more energy than most people. And people go, where do you get all your energy? Energy is infinite once you recognize the source. Your vitality in life is directly proportioned to the vividness of your vision. When you're living by your highest values, your V5, V6 areas of your occipital cortex come lighting up to the associate visual center. And it basically allows you to see the vision that you have in front of you that you'd like to create in the world. And you hold that vision and those of the vision flourish and those without a vision perish. But if you go down in your amygdala and you're down in there living in lower values and you're activating the old primitive survival brain and trying to avoid predator and seek prey and trying to avoid the negatives and seek the positives, you'll be skewing yourself, you'll be in entropy, you'll be breaking yourself down and you'll be wondering why you can't seem to have enough energy to get what you really want done. So important to prioritize your life. I'm gonna say that in most every video I do because it's, I've, I've been doing this stuff for almost 50 years. And one thing I'm certain about is that that is the key to mastering your life. If you want to take a super task, you want to take all areas of your life and link it to what you value most. Whatever you want to learn, link it to your highest value. Whatever you want to do in your career, link whatever action steps it requires to, to your highest value. If you want to build wealth, link the action steps that have been proven to build wealth to your highest value. If you want to have a relationship, find out what they're dedicated to and how it has to help you fulfill your highest values. If you want to lead, live by your highest values. You'll automatically wake up your leadership. If you want more physiology, more energy, like I'm saying now, live by your highest priority. It brings your autonomic nervous system into perfect balance and allows you to have homeostasis. Homeostasis is efficiency. Perturbation is inefficient. And we're constantly being disturbed. When we're infatuated, resentful to things, the world outside us distracts us and keeps us from being centered and poised and present with our purpose. And if we want to be inspired, we live by our highest priority because our highest priority is where we're constantly inspired from within. If I research and write and I do that every day, I'm inspired. I got full of energy. I go all day long on it. I do 18, 20 hours a day. 
There's no problem. There's no lack of energy when you're doing what's really, truly what you feel is your calling. So if you want longevity, I'm absolutely certain that there's a, it, there's a thing called autophagy where your cells literally recycle the organelles and the components, anything that's degenerated in there. Entropy degenerates the cell components. Autophagia comes in there to try to clean it up. And autophagia, whether it's microphagia, where it goes right into lysosomes, or it's, it's uh, macrophagia, autophagia, where it's actually using autophagosomes and then lysosomes, whatever the process to recycle and clean out the body, it's like cleaning out a house. It feels more refreshed. And that is enhanced to the degree that we live by our highest values. We clean it out. And that's been shown to live, help us live longer lives. That's why fasting <clears throat> and eating wisely and not overeating has been linked to longevity. That's why having a purpose, which is your highest value, is linked to longevity. That's why drinking lots of water, it's wiser to drink water than is all the other friggin' drinks that people fill in their minds, fill in their bodies. You know, and if you sit there and drink all these other con these other systems out there, you're, you're probably going to have volatilities, particularly if it has sugar in it. But if you drink water, the universal solvent, you have the most efficient use of your energy. Water, a purpose in life that inspires you, eating moderately and very lightly, an occasional uh, fast or whatever, all those things are known to increase longevity. And doing something you love to do that has deep meaning to you and having some massive goals. I have a program called Master Planning for Life and the Breakthrough Experience. Both those programs are designed to help you decide what are your bucket lists that you want to do in this life and beyond your life. Because if you've got a reason to live beyond your life, you're going to live a longer life. Those are all factors to help you have more vitality and longevity. So again, in summary, <clears throat> prioritize your life, drink water, breathe deeply, because if you breathe in a diaphragmatic breathing instead of the thoracic breathing, you're gonna get more oxygen and more cycling of respiration and, and more vitality from that alone. That helps use the use up the, get the mitochondria working perfectly. If you'll do that, you'll have more vitality and longevity and, and if, as long as you have some purpose, something that's inspiring to you that you want to live your life by, that also adds to longevity and vitality. So fill your day with the highest priority actions that are most deeply meaningful, that are most fulfilling, that you feel are really, you're really dedicated to on a daily basis and give yourself permission to have a long life. And there's absolutely no reason. There's no lack of energy. Uh, there's no lack of energy to somebody who's inspired by their mission. I've seen people in the breakthrough experience, one of my signature programs that I've been teaching on 1,122, three times. I've seen people there when they're kind of drained and they're basically depressed and they're frustrated because their, their amygdala is making go off trying to create fantasies. I see them all of a sudden go through the value determination in the breakthrough experience, get clear about what it is that they're, they're committed to, get a tear of inspiration, see a vision all of a sudden in their mind, start prioritizing their actions. And I watch their energy levels go up. I watch their extroverted ability to speak up and get their mission and message out in the world go up. And all of a sudden, they don't feel like they're working against things. They feel things are on the way, not in the way. There's no friction. There's fuel. And when they're, then they're grateful for life. Gratitude is one of the keys of longevity because you're grateful for life. You grow. And uh, you have more fluency, more congruency. But I see people in the breakthrough experience when they actually do that or in master planning and they get clear about that, they get inspired. And all of a sudden they're working till, till almost midnight and I go, whoa, I didn't even pay attention what time it was. When you're inspired by what you do, you don't notice time. The day zips by, you just don't even notice time. But when you're sitting there uninspired, living by low priority, life is hell. Life is a, you know, John Belton said that, that you can make hell out of heaven or hell out of, heaven out of hell. It's all based on your perception. If you live by highest priority, I guarantee you, you're going to have more of a gratitude life, which is heavenless, heavenful. If you go through and you live in a state of ingratitude, that's hell. Even Pope John Paul, I remember, said that the hell was ingratitude. And I think that that's the way life is designed to be. We're designed to live fluently and congruently and inspired and have a heavenly grace estate on a daily basis. And we, it's simply prioritizing your life. I, I will emphasize that every talk I ever do. And that's why I talk about values so much. So... Hopefully that uh, was just whets your appetite, makes you stand, stop and think, maybe go out and read a little bit about it. But uh, your life and your physiology is trying to guide you to be authentic and live by priority. Okay, I just want to share something on vitality and longevity and also let you know about an upcoming presentation that I'm doing. It says how your psychology affects your physiology. This is on-demand masterclass. And what you think impacts your body's health and vitality. 
I'd like to take this topic and go now deeper. And this program will do, this uh, masterclass is gonna go much deeper. I'm gonna go through and explain how the autonomics and how your psychology affects your physiology through the autonomics, epigenetics, plasticity. I'm gonna be going down the, the rabbit hole on that one and show you how literally why your symptoms are not your enemies, they're your friends and how to use your symptoms to guide you back to authentic lifestyles. I really believe that your physiology and psychology are constantly trying to get you authentic. So in this particular program, how your psychology affects your physiology, which you definitely want to join me, this demand uh, on-demand masterclass, we're going to basically show you how your perceptions, your thoughts affect your physiology. And we're going to help you understand how to maximize your vitality, longevity, and your overall physiological feelings of thankfulness in life. So I look forward to seeing you there. You can contact it. I believe if you, when you sign up, there's a special gift. It's not on here, but there'll be a special gift on how to have a more inspired vision in life. So please take advantage of this coming class. And I look forward to seeing you on the next week. And um, thank you for having a, a, a listen and uh, make sure you prioritize your life today. Stop right now. Ask yourself, what's the highest priority action I could be doing right now in this moment to help me fulfill my mission on earth?